AW announced on Wednesday they are expanding their talent relations team, promoting four familiar names within that group, and bringing on former Impact women's wrestler Madison Rain as a coach for the women's division. Rain begins her new role tonight, 36 years old, part of Impact's last set of tapings in Louisville. She lost to Masha Slamovich and Mia Yim. Uh, Sanjay Dutt, QT, Pat Buck, and Tony Schiavone have all received promotions, three of which are to the vice president level. Dutt is now the VP of Production and Creative Coordination, where he will coordinate communication of AW storylines, liaise between post-production and key staff to maintain... That's a lot of words. He got a promotion. (laughs) He's going to go back and forth with stuff. You want to describe his liaison role? Marshall is now VP of Show and Creative Coordination. He does a lot of words as well. Buck is now VP of Talent Development, where he also... A lot of liaising going on. Apparently, you make more money to liaise. Yeah. I was unaware of that today. Until today. So, well, in a way, yes, you do. Sure you money. are very valuable when you can be the salve between wounds and such. Shivani received a promotion as senior producer and special advisor to talent. Chris Daniels will continue to serve as manager... Of talent relations. Did they well, you need know, to announce any of this? Did they mean to? Did No, did they need to? It's not like they're a publicly traded company or anything like this. Well, no, part but, of me, you know. I understand why, but there's a part of me where it's like, all you did was give everybody online, if something happens, somebody else to tag about, well, what are you going to do about this when it comes to your role of this and that? It's like... I don't know. I, I guess it's a good thing, though, if you look at it from the aspect of he's obviously trying to delegate authority i would assume that's what this is about and try to make things a little bit easier on himself considering he's the the last call for these sorts of things so yeah tony khan believes that new people in charge of wwe is a good thing well we're on the same page well yeah khan spoke to sports grid on the recent changes he said, quote, it's going to change the competition, but I think that's a good thing. AW's got a big fan base. We're in 130 countries now around the world. Here in the U.S., we built a great fan base. The competition is going to change. It's a different person in the chair opposite me, but I don't think that's going to be a bad thing for the wrestling fans necessarily. Well, it's definitely not a bad thing for the wrestling fans. No. And you know what else? No. Not a bad thing for the wrestlers either. No. Khan also said the move benefits wrestlers themselves. Yeah. Probably more so than ever he said, I imagine the great wrestlers are going to be in demand. Again, I think this is probably going to be good for the wrestling fans because that's going to be one of the most exciting things about pro wrestling, free agency. It's one of those things that was really missing from the sport for almost two decades before AW came in because there was not a legitimate competitor in the free market. It was one of the worst things, I think, that happened in American sports in my lifetime when WCW closed down. Well, in terms of uh, wrestling, sure as uh, heck was one of the worst things. So, you know, well, my uh, my prediction, very quickly, okay. if you don't mind, Mike. Sure, go ahead. In the, uh, in the short term, there's going to be some, uh, it's going to be a bumpy road for AEW because, you know, WWE's got money and uh, they're going to be looking to get some people. And I think that, and I know this, this is not I think, because I, I know this, you know, there are a lot of people that, Two weeks ago, would not have been considering strongly going to WWE. Whereas now, I think that they are open to the idea. And furthermore, I mean, we've seen small changes, small positive changes. If these, if we continue to see positive changes, uh, the number of people that are willing to look at WWE is going to be even bigger. And the number of people that are uh, at least considering it uh, they may more than consider it. So, uh, you know, the the Cody thing was very important, as we talked about. Cody goes there and gets buried. That would have been bad times. They pushed Cody to the moon. That opened a lot of people's eyes. and uh, But mostly the people that were, like, bigger, you know, the WWE-style guys. Now, even if you're not a WWE-style guy, I mean, you could get an opportunity. So it's going to be uh, tough in the short term for AEW. But in the long term, there's going to be too many people in too few spots in AEW or in WWE. And then there will be people looking to go to AEW if they've got a good television deal with money. So anyway, back in a moment, we'll get Mike's thoughts, Observer Live. 
Back here on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh oh, what's up? I'm just, I, I'm just, uh, the, we have our chat here, and uh, <laughs> some of them just cannot, uh, the, the Cody thing's overblown. Listen, do you think people are dumb? Okay. A guy left AEW, he walked into WWE with likely a seven figure deal. As a main eventer, with his AEW character and got a push, you're telling me you don't think anybody in AEW went, hmm, wow, that's intriguing. That really opens my eyes there. Well, I can tell you because I heard from them, okay? But, you know, if you don't believe me, you can use your own brain and see that that would be intriguing for people, especially because before he showed up, remember we hear, oh, he'll be chasing the 24-7 title. Oh, I wonder if he'll be Stardust. Remember all that? Well, that didn't happen at all. The exact opposite happened. He even kept his music. You don't think that opened anybody's eyes? You think these people are dumb? Come on. It did. Now, of course, Smarten it's, up. it's not the end-all and be-all because he is Cody Rhodes, and he was there before, and there is a relationship, and he is the first guy back. And so there's all these things where what works for one may not work for everybody, but... It's a new page has turned, and I know people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear about these changes that may or may not slowly get made and all that other stuff. I know they don't want to hear about it, but tough. You're probably going to have to hear about it because I'm sure they do in the next couple of years want to put their best foot forward when it comes to talking and dealing with talent. Number one, for all of the things that have happened in that company and the culture that is currently being investigated, maybe it's time to, like, you know, change some things there. But also because they look at MJF and they look at other people on that roster, powerhouse Hobbs, and they look at other people and they go, we may want to have those folks. And now Vince is out of the way. And now Uncle Paul is here. You remember what Uncle Paul did for NXT? So... Are we going to see massive wholesale changes? I don't know. As CM Punk said, he doesn't think there's going to be any changes in the culture whatsoever. We'll have to see. But the Cody Rhodes, the whole deal with him, and granted, he also has a character that fits perfectly in with WWE. And I think MJF, there's other people that do. Some other people may not be so lucky, but it at least is giving them an option where in a big option that you may have something to kind of, you know, compare yourself against and compare the company you're working for against. So, it, it, look, everybody's going to throw their flags down over this, and they have been, and they will continue to do so. But one thing about talking about the death of WCW as somebody that was a big NWA fan and grew up with Crockett Promotions and was a bigger WCW fan for quite a long time and tried to to hold on to that ghost for as long as I could. Yeah, it was bad for the wrestling business that it died, but it needed to die. It, it did. And in, with hindsight being 2020, all these many years later, you, le- you got to leave scorched earth. It was the whole thing about killing a territory was you left scorched earth in most cases and you had to kill everything to rebuild it back up again and you see the direction that ring of honor took things you saw because there were no options but ways to watch things became easier you know live well i heard all these things of where you would download japanese wrestling shows and that became more of a thing so all of that, the rise of MMA that was taking place during that time that nobody really remembers now, but the pride and the K1 and all that sort of, all of that stuff, all of it was essential and necessary to get us to where we are today. So as sad as that was, and as much as it sucked for a lot of people, including people that lost jobs, who had lifetime jobs in the business and wanted to have jobs in the business, yeah, that was sad, but it needed to be done to get us to where we are now. Rusty. Rusty Rose, ten four eighty six. <laughs> dusty, is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's uh, it's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> okay, out of ring. <laughs> Harmon <and> Blanchett. <laughs> Harwin. <laughs> way back then, they had cha- chain barricades, <laughs> and then they had a tag team with Rich Fl- uh, Rick Flair, and some more guys. And so that was that. I'm just too. Who who did Rusty Rhodes wrestle? If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, 
you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.